Hello and welcome to another episode of Rico's Rants. I'm your host, Rico DiGiorgio. So, I am way behind. I haven't done a video in, I think, like, two or three weeks. And I've seen movies. It's not like I haven't seen movies. I just am behind. I'm still... The reason why I'm behind is I'm just not 100%. And I'm... I've been battling a migraine for, like, almost three weeks. And it's... It's coming and going, but it's just it's just hard to do it in in a light that's not projecting my face, and plus it just migraines just drain me. Um, so I had a second wind. I figured I'd kind of try and do a couple tonight. And also, one of the reason why I'm not doing as many videos is my uh, I live with, I live at home. My father's uh, a senior. And he, I keep telling him, like, hey, I'm going to go to my room, I'm going to film and do a episode. And he just comes in and just opens the door and is like, what are you doing? And I, I mean, he, you've not seen that footage because I've just ruined, I just don't post that shit, it just ruins takes. And I just get frustrated. Like, he, he just came in 20 minutes ago. He's like, what's this light on for? And I'm like, don't fucking worry about it. Anyways, so, without further ado, I'm going to try and do a couple videos. You know what? It's been about a minute. I'm okay. You can just skip through this shit. So, this is my video. I'm flying, Jack. I'm flying. <laughs> Sorry, Dino. Go back to sleep. So, I'm doing Titanic. Because I, it occurred to me that I had not seen Titanic in about maybe, oh god, 20 fucking years. Like, I don't think I've seen Titanic since, I mean, maybe 20 years is, is too much, but close to 20 years, at least 15 years. Like, I think I remember seeing it when it came out on VHS. This was the first time I've ever seen it on DVD, and I'd only see it in on VHS. I never saw it in theaters, and I only saw it in VHS with a two-case, the two-cassette uh, thing. Like, you had to watch two fucking cassettes to watch Titanic. And I had to watch two discs for this. Like, I got this at work, and it came, it was like the 20th anniversary or something, or the 15th anniversary, or the 10th anniversary or something edition. And it came with a bunch of discs, so I'm like, okay, there's going to be a lot of bonus material wrong disc one was half the movie disc two was the other half i'm like what the fuck how fu i forgot how long this movie is okay so why did i pick i mean another reason why i just it had been years since i've seen it and i was kind of cringing before i saw it being like I'm gonna fucking hate this. This is a girl movie. It's it's. I remember back then not being impressed because I was a kid when it came out. I was six, or something, and I kind of just never rewatched it. But look, my opinion, in part, way back when was also my reluctance to kind of get on the Leo Di DiCaprio bandwagon like I was just sort of not into him and I always kind of thought of him as a mediocre actor or at least an okay actor in really good movies so I was sort of like I was getting tired of him and being a lot of Scorsese films I didn't feel like he was just my I, you know I always wanted Scorsese to branch out and work with other people he kind of gets stuck with De Niro and then DiCaprio you know I, I'm waiting for the movie where Scorsese is going to work with Pacino or Johnny Depp or, or Edward Norton or something. You know, sort of branch out a little bit. He doesn't do it often. So, I admittedly have seen some good DiCaprio movies. Uh, Django Unchained, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. I did, in particular, enjoy him in way back when, The Quick and the Dead. I thought he was perfect for that role. And, you know, Wolf of Wall Street's entertaining, but you're not going to see Wolf of Wall Street for Leo DiCaprio. You're going to see it for the debauchery that's involved. One of these days I'll do a Wolf of Wall Street video. But Titanic is the one that made him 
like superstardom and teen idol and and you know he's good in this and he's good at this age in this um so yes this was a good movie for DiCaprio and but I was more impressed with Kate Winslet and I'll I mean look I don't have to give you the plot of Titanic anybody who knows anything about the Titanic I mean I you know when you're a little kid they teach you about the Titanic they you know this giant ship crashed into an iceberg and sunk and a lot of, of fucking people like half the people and if anything the poor people died on the Titanic if you had money you were saved usually and this shows that now it's really two separate movies because it's it's all in flashback form and it's Bill Paxton is a, you know, he, he's doing an expedition, you know, a modern day Indiana Jones type of thing where he's trying to find this, you know, he's, he's, his team is going into the Titanic with robots that are like, you know, going through in, in the, you know, water and the ocean and it's crushing, you know, the, the deeper they go, the more, uh, force that it'll just crush everything, so they can't dive down there. They have to send robots and shit. And from what I've read, I did some research, this was the footage that we're seeing of the sunken Titanic is the Titanic. So I will at least will applaud James Cameron for giving it that sense of realism and going the extra step, being like, this is already a huge budgeted film. And now he's going to be like, well, by the way, we're also going to film some stuff in the Titanic. Or, like, show uh, shots of the sunken Titanic. You know, whoever... I don't know remember who dist distributed this. Columbia, I think. Columbia or TriStar, I guess. They could have been like, no. Like, build up a fucking model. Like, the... Every, no. Like, take a model and put it in a fucking, you know, tub and film it. No, we're not doing that shit. But, James Cameron is... A force to be reckoned with. He he does he's an he's probably the angriest Canadian I've ever ever heard of. He's he's kind of like a yeah he's a tyrant from what I've read. But he usually makes decent films. I mean Terminator Two is fucking classic. Aliens is amazing. And Titanic. Yes, you when you get through the love story that's kind of schmaltzy. And the villain is so obviously smug, like, you know, they didn't really give him any, they didn't give the villain um, any heart. They kind of just made him the most callous douche nozzle ever. I mean, he's, he's good looking, he's sleazy, he's rich, and he is greedy and and he uses his money to influence I, you know i kind of like a flawed villain i like a flawed hero you know when the hero sort of goes into the villain side it makes it more interesting just my opinion um this the set is phenomenal i will say that they I mean they painstakingly recreated the titanic from countless uh blueprints and drawings and and you know, that, that's all they had. I mean, there's no real survivors of the Titanic. Not now. Maybe back then they may have had a kid who was like, I remember this looking like that. But this is all done just by information written down. So, Kate Winslet, I remember watching this and I'm like, fuck, she's got to be like, 20 years old or something and she looks very young but she still has that presence that she eventually we grow to see her being a master actress and she a couple times her British accent sneak snuck out because she's supposed to be American 
Um, even though I remember watching this as a kid, assuming she was British. I just, I guess, I just thought upper class in, you know, upper class type of mentality and air of arrogance. And yes, that kind of poshiness was just always British. So when I was a kid, I just thought she was British. Um, so a couple times her British accent popped out. Um, but overall, the dynamic between the two of them is, you know, you, you know, going into this, that one, they're going to fall in love. Two, ship is going to sink. And three, Rose is going to survive because the, like I said, there's two separate stories. Old Rose is this older woman and she's like a hundred years old or some shit. And she's telling the story of the Titanic to uh, Paxton and, and his crew because they uncover this painting uh, in a vault which shows, or not a painting, a drawing, a sketch um, of a young Kate Winslet nude and sort of just draped on a, on a couch and she's got this necklace which is the what is it the jewel of the ocean it's this blue diamond that you know which i would assume would be a sapphire but they explicitly say no it's a diamond okay um and she's wearing it and then like she calls and she's like i don't know, i'm the old i'm the young girl in the picture is me and i and she gives them particular details and they say okay so this chick is actually on here blah blah blah, blah. At first, they try to discredit her because she, after she survived, she became an actress, and so she's looking for trial. You know, she's looking for attention. One guy in particular looks like an American, looks like Hagrid's uh, American brother, <laughs> just this schlubby, heavy bearded, long haired guy, just like just, I, I, I was just like, what the fuck? Um, he is just like being an asshole is like she's a fucking actress hello and anyways um so it's all about her telling her story and how her mother has more or less bartered her off to marry uh the villain i mean technically the villain is the fucking iceberg but whatever but this this fucking guy and i'm blanking on his um billy zane and where the fuck did billy zane go right like the only other movie I can think of, or two movies, three total. So Titanic, he was in Tombstone, and he was in The Phantom, I think is what it's called. Maybe not The Phantom, I don't know. So he played some purple superhero way back when, and I was like, I remember watching it and being like, this sucks. I, I, I remember seeing a clip of them, like, wow, this is really stupid. Um, but he disappeared. And he's, from what I know, he still acts. But, like, I remember reading about him. He's, like, uh, one time, and he had a quote. He's, like, why do you think I'm not in any movies or, like, prominent movies anymore? Because I'll tell you, alimony. Like, I have no money to even just broadcast myself anymore. Like, I'm I'm finished. Like, I'm trying, but I'm just done. And, you know, I, 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 had, a, I had some great roles, and I thought Titanic was going to superstar on me, and I just fell off the face of the earth. Which is unfortunate because, in particular, in this film, he has some acting chops. He, everything I said before, he's, you know, he's good looking. You know, he, I mean, in a weird way, and I hate to do this comparison, but I, I kept thinking of him like he looks like Marlon Brando. Like he looks like a young, brand, more talented Brando, I guess. And I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for that, but I, I'm not a fan of Brando. I'm, I'm trailing. Okay, so. Jack Leo DiCaprio is just a poor Midwestern guy who just got lucky get or unlucky getting a ticket through a game of poker with his Italian friend Fabrizio. I remember that because I was like, oh, Italian. Um, they get on the Titanic and he and Rose encounter each other because Rose just doesn't, is just so fed up with the aristocratic life and having to be... Um, sheltered and and sort of bartered away to a man she does not love only so that her mother 
and she can have some more wealthy social status. So she contemplates jumping off the Titanic. Um, and Jack sort of prevents her from committing suicide. Um, and they... I mean, at first, uh, Cal, that's his fucking name, Billy Zane's character, uh, wants to assu wants to assume that he was... that Jack was trying to rape her. Because, you know, he's talking to her. He's like, hey, look, I don't really want to jump in after you, but I'm going to have to. He takes his boots off, takes his coat off. So it kind of looks like he's undressing. And when he pulls her off, out of, you know, back into the boat or ship, um, he's on top of her. And all these guys sort of clamber and take him off her. Uh, so he just assumes that this fucking guy's trying to rape his wife, even though they're not married. Um, so that in order to to uh, thank the fucking uh, uh, Leo DiCaprio, they invite him to a dinner. And, and it's a way of just them being like, oh yeah, we'll invite him to thank him, but we're really just going to show off our money and embarrass this fucking kid. Luckily, Kathy Bates is in it on the ship and she's wealthy and she's uh what's her fucking name um molly brown that's her fucking name uh and she was known as the unsinkable molly brown from what i've read and she was just this vibrant heavy you know heavy woman um but was very kind of crass and boisterous and had aristocratic and and wealth and everything but was just like one of the commoners who just happened to have money. Kind of like Donald Trump. <laughs> and I say that meaning like boisterous and, and, and just ill-informed and says whatever he wants, but just happens to have a lot of money. That's my politics out the window. Sorry. And I'm saying, and, you know, Kathy Bates is always a treasure. I've always been a fan of her. I've always loved her. Um... And so she sort of takes Jack under her wing and sort of tutors him on how to be around the wealthy. And you could see this love between Jack and Rose just blossoming. And after that real, yes, uh, party, he grabs her and takes her down to a real party, which is down in the poor man area, where everyone's drinking beer and playing cards and dancing. And she kind of holds her own with drinking and, and shows off like she's like yo you guys think you're tough they're arm wrestling you're like, yeah, you guys think you're tough watch this and she does like a fucking ballerina on her toes type of thing and you can see it looks painful all the guys are like oh Jesus Christ and then of course you know people are chasing after them they you know her mother steps in and says you can't I don't want you around this fucking guy anymore your promise to Cal, blah, 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 blah. Cal steps in and slaps the shit out of Kate Winslet. When I was like, oh, you motherfucker. Uh, Jack keeps stepping in and being like, you know, we belong together, blah, 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 blah. I love you, blah, blah, blah. And there's that scene where, like I did with Dino, where he takes her to the... I can't remember if it's the stern or the bow. The front of the boat. So he kind of puts her up on the thing and she holds out her arms and she's like, Jack, I'm flying, and they fucking kiss. And then they go down to a, um, they're being chased by David Warner, who is great in this. He's sort of the henchman of Cal. He's chasing after them and then they kind of get away and hide and they find a, um, they find a fucking car, which I was like, where the, f is that what these rich people just did? They load up their fucking cars on this? Um, and they fuck in the car. And I remember back then watching this and my mother trying to shield my eyes. I was just like, what? 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 And I I could understand. Like, this is some... For a PG-13 movie, it's kind of racy. Like, P you see people dying. People are swearing. Not often, but there's a couple... I think there's like one or two F-bombs. And there's fucking nudity. I knew that going, you know, I was always kind of like, this is one of the rare PG-13 movies that was rated PG-13, which had nudity and like boobies and booty and everything. Not common. And I remember being a kid being like, who the fuck is that? Um, but it's very tasteful and I appreciate that. It wasn't, this, the sex scene was not gratuitous. It was very romantic. This is a very romantic movie. And I love a good romance. I love a good romantic comedy. 
this just <clears throat> happens to be Romeo and Juliet on the fucking Titanic. And I will say this, you're still kind of caught up with the story, which is all fictional, that you actually kind of forget for a minute that the fucking iceberg is going to hit and all these fucking people are going to die. You, you genuinely are just kind of like, oh shit, I forgot this is what's going to happen. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you, if you, like if you watch Passion of the Christ and you're just kind of like, Jesus died? Yeah. Like we all know this. Jesus hits the fucking iceberg. What are you going to do? So, I, I, I got to admit, I was genuinely like, oh fuck, I forgot about that. But it's okay. That's what a good thing. That's a good movie where it takes you, it sucks you right into the story and then reminds you what the fuck is going on. And then you got caught in this despair, just kind of like, ah, oh, they're going to fucking die. So, all plot aside, it's acted well. The set, the set is amazing. Did it work? Did it deserve Best Picture? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't remember what the other Best Picture nominees were in 1997, but for sure, this this definitely had the big had a great budget, had great actors. I mean, could you remake this movie now? No. Should you remake this movie? No. In fact, this sort of set the statement like you can't never make another movie about the Titanic. In fact, I remember years after Titanic came out, there was another movie. There was a shitty spin-off called The Britannic or something. I remember it was specifically that one, Britannic. And it looked like from what I read on the cover, and this is when I was like 10 years, 11 years old, going to a video store and just seeing this, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And they said it was like another Titanic, like the, you know, they tried to make another one, like the, whoever made the ship tried to make another one. And that sunk. I was like, who the fuck made this movie, decide this was a good idea, and hope that people would not just judge it harshly. Like, I was like, really? Fuck you. So yeah, excellent film. Five stars all the way. I mean, it's acting is great. The directing is great. I heard some fucked up shit about, like, the budget. Not the budget, the production. Because Jim Cameron was such a angry fucking director. And was meticulous and wanted take after take and whatever. And, you know, was very firestormy. One of the crew members who's never been caught doused their lobster chowder with PCP. And so many people got drugged. And, like, like people were hallucinating. People were vomiting. And people were just, like, going. Like, they had to bring in so many um, EMTs just to, like, calm people down. And, and they never caught the fucking guy. So, on top of this, and the budget going crazy, someone drugs their fucking food. And it was pure revenge on, on Jim Cameron. But... I'm not going to lie, it made a fucking hell of a movie. I did have a problem with the character of Rose at the ending. But, I'm not going to explain why. Um, it just felt like, bitch, you can move over, get him on the thing with you. And then she's like, check, I'll never let go, and let's go. You know what? I get it. He was dead. But you could have just pulled his ass up. God, I mean, I remember everyone being like, when that movie came out, everyone's like, fuck you, Kate Winslet. You could have let him on that damn uh, door. What the fuck is wrong with you? And I really didn't get it until I saw it rewatch it. I'm like, oh, yeah, she could have. Fuck. Anyways, I'd easily give it five stars. Will I watch it again? No. I will wait. I mean, yes, I will, but not immediately. I will give it, like... Maybe another five to ten years before I rewatch it again. If it comes on TV again, maybe I'll watch it. But I I don't ever have to hunt through it and be like, oh man, Titanic is on. It's a good movie, and I liked it. In particular, DiCaprio was good. 
And I can acknowledge that. On that note, I'm the king of the world. Bye, guys.